Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Now in today's video, we are on our last box, box five, and I actually had to trim down the items that I flipped today because here in Wisconsin, it is so cold, negative 30 folks. And a couple of the items I actually had or would have had to go out into my woodworking shop and I, I just didn't have it in me to <sighs> endure this extreme cold weather. There is no heat in there and I would definitely have had to cut some boards, use my jigsaw. So two of the items uh, were completely axed because of that. So in today's video, you guys got four items that I flipped. Now, because of the cold weather too, I was on the struggle bus. I don't know if you've ever felt that way, but I felt I was struggling big time, probably because I'm freezing out here. And all I wanted to do was hunker down under a blanket in my warm home. Uh, my heater in here is just not keeping up with this cold. Um, I have not had to deal with this type of cold weather yet out here. Uh, so I think after today, because I have my other space in my home all set for shipping, I think in the future, my videos until it warms up here in Wisconsin are all going to be taped in there. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I can't wait to hear what you all think. I have had this little bushel basket in my stash for quite a while. My initial vision had something to do with white Rust-Oleum spray paint. I did spray it and I think I didn't like it and I just set it aside. So in today's uh, transformation, we are going to take DIYs, Queen Bee, and we are going to transform this. But before we break out the paint, I am taking a look at a couple of my molds. And I knew um, from the other night during my Wednesday Night Live, uh, some viewers had suggested adding molds to this. And I thought, why not add a little bit of the trimmings mold? Now, IOD has trimmings one, two, and three. So there's three different molds, and these can be used for um, small items such as this. You can also use them on different furniture pieces to add some trim. Really just take whatever item that you are flipping to the next level. And I haven't used molds in quite some time. Um, and it's not that I forgot about them. I just, sometimes, you know, you start using one product and you use it over and over. Um, as I was getting organized, I ended up um, organizing all my molds. And I thought this was a great time to break them out and use them on this bushel basket. Now, if you haven't used a mold before, they are super easy. I do recommend that you use cornstarch. Just lightly dust the inside of your mold with cornstarch. Uh, take the IOD clay, which is absolutely perfection. Uh, and what I do is I start on one side and all of the IOD molds have the micro rim. So it's really nice and easy to get a very clean um, flat back. And I just actually take my thumb and I just swipe it and I kind of take my fingers after I do that and just level it out and it's just perfect. So do that and then what I after I get that all in the mold then I flip it over and I really let gravity do the work for me. I just take one side of the mold and kind of bend it like pull it back and then it just falls right to the counter like falls out of the mold and um, it really helps with that cornstarch. Next, I'm going to lay it on my project, and I've determined that I'm probably going to need about two and a quarter of these molds, but I want to start gluing on that first piece right away uh, to start having it dry. 
Um, otherwise, you can use blue painter's tape to hold it in place. Uh, but by doing this, um, I just squirt a little tight bond glue on the piece. Take my finger, rub it about. I don't want it too thick. I want it just nicely to the edges. You don't want a lot of glue like seeping out. Once I do that, then I apply it to my piece and what I have learned um, from past experience is either use that blue painter's tape to hold it in place or if you have it lying how I do here where it's like flat, let it dry and set up and then you can move on. Next, I just make sure that I am lightly tapping it into place, just applying enough pressure that you make sure that you get a good adhesion. And I do that around all of the edges and in the center. And then I'm gonna let that, set that aside, let that dry, and then move on to my next piece. Now that I have that completely done and I'm letting that dry, I decided I wanted to create just a little piece of that mold for that top handle. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to put in what I need, pull it out, and then glue it on. Now, a side note is when you are working with clay, you don't want it to dry out. I do recommend once you've opened your clay, put it in a Ziploc bag, like a really nice heavy duty one, and then also take a damp uh, piece of paper towel and put it in there. That way it helps ensure that that clay will not dry out until you use it next. I do like to let my clay dry overnight and the reason I do that is because when you paint wet clay you could possibly distort that image and IOD has the most beautiful details in their molds and you don't want to paint it too soon and get rid of all that beautiful detail. So let it dry overnight very thoroughly um, like I did and then now we're going to go in with Queen Bee from DIY and we are going to apply two even coats to both the top and the base of this bushel basket. So when I first started this project, I thought, oh gosh, this is going to be one of those projects where I have to get into every little crevice, nook and cranny. I'm like, oh, maybe I should have spray painted it. Like maybe that's why I started spray painting it. But in the end, it really was not that bad. I um, like using these smaller detail brushes. I always pick up a pack um, when I'm at Walmart, just have them around. A lot of times I get comments like, why do you use such small brushes when you could use such a large brush and cover um, all of it much sooner? I just like the control that I get with these little brushes. I can get into every little nook and cranny. It doesn't, it, it helps me paint better too. I don't make a big mess. And um, so that's why I like using more of these little brushes. And really this was not that bad painting this. Um, and I just, like I said, I slid that little brush in, in all those little um, crevices and I let it dry very thoroughly. And then we came back and we will do our final step. Next, I went in with Big Top and I applied a nice even coat of Big Top to the entire piece. I did load up my brush and I allowed the Big Top to get into every little nook and cranny. I don't like to put too much um, pressure on the DIY paint when I am sealing it uh, because DIY paint does reactivate. You do want to seal it with some type of top coat, whether that be big top, poly, uh, a type of wax, but if you do apply too much pressure, you do um, risk the chance of pulling up some of the paint. Uh, I do hear um, customers talk about that. So uh, the new DIY paint brushes will be available very soon. I do have them on pre-order. There is one called the Feather, and I think it's going to be perfect for this type of application, putting on your second coat or putting on a top coat to prevent the paint from um, it just allows you to really apply it like a feather 
So all the products that I am using in today's video, you can find on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. I do carry the entire DIY paint line, all the IOD, stamps, molds, paint inlays, and transfers, and I do carry all the recycled decoupage papers. Here the whole piece is dry and I'm absolutely loving this queen bee yellow. What I initially had visioned was I was going to go in with a darker wax, make it look like an aged bushel basket. But with spring right around the corner, I decided to go in with white wax from DIY and I really get into every little nook and cranny with the white wax, um, just really brush it in there and then I take a piece of paper towel and wipe away the excess. Anywhere there's like too much of the white wax, I just take my brush kind of sweep it out of that area and then uh, take that piece of paper towel and wipe again. And I really love how this entire little bushel basket turned out. For this next project, I had picked this up a while ago. I did pay $3.99, I think, for it. Possibly got it at half price. What really caught my eye was all the beautiful detail on this piece and the patina. Uh, the downfall was you couldn't see the beautiful detail. And initially on my live on Wednesday, everyone said, leave it, leave that beautiful patina and the detail. And then someone did suggest applying white wax to bring out all that beautiful detail. So we took another vote and everyone agreed we should add a bit of white wax to this and uh, bringing out all that beautiful detail. I was a little worried. I didn't know if it would hurt the patina. But in the end, I absolutely love how this piece turned out. And what an easy way to just bring out the character in a piece by applying just a little wax, taking a piece of paper towel, and wiping away that excess. And I even did it on the very bottom of the inside because there was some etched detail in there as well. Um, but it looks like I, after years of use, um, some of that detail kind of went away, but it really made the outside just pop. So I have been asked many times, have I ever repurposed a repurpose? And yes, this is the first time that I think I am going in and redoing a thrift flip. So when I first started my channel, this was back in a video and I was trying different paints out and different techniques and I flipped these and after I was done with them, I never liked them. And they went right back into my stash just so that I could get re-inspired. Um, and I mean, this must have been like over a year ago, maybe more. Uh, so in Wednesday's live, everyone suggested that I paint these black. Now, they also suggested that I add a little, they thought I should keep the copper in the center. Uh, they also uh, suggested that I use a little bit of gold in the center as well where those medallions are. 
So initially my vision was I was going to paint them black, which I did here. I applied two even coats of black paint to the entire piece. And then I went in with a golden um, gilding wax from DIY and I just tried to add a little bit to that medallion. Well, then I touched one area and then I touched, ugh, I just, I kept, I had it on my finger <laughs> and maybe that's where I went wrong um, because I always see Debbie Beard taking her finger and just rubbing it on little areas. And I think if I wouldn't have touched the other areas, it probably would have been okay. But once I touched one area, then I'm like, oh, maybe I should touch here. And then in the end, I felt like it was too much gold and I did not like it. So then I went back and I came up with an alternate solution. So here is where I went in with that gilding wax. And I just am going to show you like, I kind of liked it. I just didn't know if it I don't know, you guys in the comments, let me know what you think. Uh, should I have just left it like this or how uh, do, do you like my alternate solution? Okay, so I wiped as much of the gold wax off as I could and then I went in with the white wax and I just white waxed the whole piece and I wiped off the excess. I do have some candlesticks from the previous week I'm going to put these all in the same booth. So I thought it would be good to have these set in one area or one vignette and then this these set in another vignette. So I did have this in one of my booths for a bit and it never sold and I just thought it was so outdated that I pulled it out and I was planning on doing something with it. It ended up in my stash and even on Wednesday night, I was trying to get a lot of suggestions from other viewers. I don't know if we all were kind of stumped what to do with this. Some recommended I add molds to it. Uh, when I was going through all my molds, uh, this little um, bunny rabbit just popped out and I thought, wouldn't that be fun to have just bunny rabbits running around, like going around the circle? So I created three molds of the bunny rabbit. I used tight bond glue and I glued them on and I did let these dry overnight and then I came back and I am going to create a real springy look with this base and this round ball. So now that I let this dry overnight, I'm coming back and I am going to apply two even coats of apothecary to this entire piece. I am going to let it dry very thoroughly in between coats and then I'm going to come back and seal it with Big Top and then we're going to apply some white wax. The base I decided to paint white swan. Oh, there was that sticker that I had from when I had it in my booth. Got rid of that, applied two even coats of white swan to the base. I sealed it with big top and that was really a quick fix. I thought about distressing it um, back, like do a wet distress. I've heard comments too saying, why do you always wet distress or why do you distress everything? So I thought, you know what? This would be a great opportunity to see if things don't sell even though I don't wet distress them or distress them. Now that the ball is dry, I'm going in with white wax. I am initially waxing the little bunnies first. I want to get into all that detail. And then from there, I'm taking any of the excess wax and I am rubbing it all over the rest of the ball. After that, I'm just going in with a piece of paper towel and wiping away the excess. And I really do love how this changed the whole look of this ball.
that was box five. Because I am going to be going on vacation very soon, I am actually going to take those items that should have been in today's video and probably incorporate them into some of those videos that I will pre-tape for the time when I am in sunny Mexico. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. And I did use a lot of white wax. I think because spring is coming, um, we hope. <laughs> I don't see it. I was telling my husband I'm feeling spring. I want spring. And he's like, how could you be feeling spring at this moment? There's snow on the ground. It's bitter cold, but I guess I want spring. And the white wax um, on my items, it just reminds me of um, spring for some reason. So I love the molds that I used in today's video too. Um, I haven't used a mold in a while and I forgot how much I I love adding them to different pieces to really um, take them to the next level. I love it. Uh, so I hope you did enjoy today's video and just seeing how I take items that are outdated and just try to transform them into something new um, that can be in your home decor. Well, you guys have yourself a wonderful weekend and we will see you on Monday. Bye. Bye.